everyone. We're here in Carrie Broussard. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Broussard's workroom in Katy, Texas. Correct. And we're going to be installing a new table grid. How long has this old one been on the table? About 10 years. Oh my. Yeah, so it's it's well worn. And, and <laughs> it's been loved. <laughs> very, very well loved. And, and you had tape markings for certain I, Roman shade sizes? Correct. I had blue painter's tape. On, on the sizes that uh, I was using more frequently, and yeah. then I could adjust it from there. Good idea, good idea. Well, after this, you'll have your brand new grid, and you'll be able to use multiple size, perfectly square Roman shades. Correct. Yeah. Cannot wait. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for letting us use your space. Uh, if you're installing a table grid, a couple things to note. Well, I'll, I'll walk you through just the tools we're going to use, and, and then I'll, if, if you're okay, like your help installing it. Oh, I'd we'll love to. I'd love to. My hands on. <laughs> all right. That's good, because it is a two-person job. Okay. And so it's, a, it's something that you probably don't want to attempt alone, because you'll just get frustrated. Okay. First piece of advice I have for everyone with their new grid is to leave it in the packaging. Leave it until you are absolutely ready to go. And the reason for that is it's a textile and it will shrink. An absolutely essential tool for installing the grid is an upholsterer's stretcher tool. Worked with one of these before? No, I have not. Okay, I'll show you how to use it, but it's uh, typically used for the base of a chair to stretch the webbing. Okay. But we'll use it today at the ends of the table to stretch the grid. Oh, okay. Right, to stretch it to size. And duct tape is helpful to ha have around. Uh, it's not necessary, but if you're concerned about it ripping as you do that, oh. this helps stabilize the pull. Okay, we also have, of course, a pneumatic staple gun, two sizes of staples. Um, a 3 h inch is fine for around the sides. And then if we stabilize the center and staple down, we want to go a little bit longer either half inch or nine sixteenths or something okay. something that will get down through the padding into the plywood. Okay. And then always <laughs> staple puller and pliers just in case you need to replace or, or, or remove some of the staples and we'll be safe today and add safety glasses. Okay, uh, the, the, the metal ruler and a metal tape measure will also come into play as we stretch it to the exact size and also make sure it's square and perfectly aligned before we secure it sure. okay. forever. <laughs> there you go. And here are the installation instructions. It's a good idea to review them before you start. There is a, um, a reminder here to leave the table canvas in the plastic bag until you're ready. And also step by step. Step one, secure one end, placing the staples two to three inches apart. And the one end we want to secure is the end you use most. I'm assuming it's mm -hmm. this end, right? Mm -hmm. We'll align that to the edge of the table. I'm right at the edge. Right at the edge, and the heavy black line this way, right at the edge there now. I've got a hair and then the fold. It's good. That's about the same amount on the, on the left here. It just hugs the top. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll roll out a little bit to uh, make sure it's all looking square. Is this the bias line? Yes, it is. Great. Right. Okay, next step. As we staple this end, Let's just keep in mind that if your hard surface is square, then our goal is to just align the lines to the hard surface. Okay. Okay? And, and uh, it's square, right? <laughs> it's been square for 10 years. Yes, it has. <laughs> yes. Okay, so the, the cuts of the plywood were, were done perfectly square, so we can just use that as our guide. What we'll need to do in this area is square it up and stretch to length. But this line here being squared to this line here, we're just worried about the edges lining up. We can check alignment and then we can make sure that as we pull and staple on this end that, that we're keeping with the It keeps slipping here. It does. Okay. Okay. 
We can clamp it. it. You can. Oh, great idea. Yeah. We'll clamp the ruler and then we can both work. Nice. Good. And then, since it's a little bit away from the ruler here, we can just pull that up. I can put this weight bar on. Oh, nice. You've got all the tools. <laughs> Starting in the center, you want it taut, and if I'm pulling a little bit away from the ruler, that's okay as long as I'm consistent with that same amount. Okay. What do you think? Is that one okay? Yeah. Okay. Good? Good. You've got a good angle there. Okay? Yes, that's good. And I'll have the, the last staple uh, at about three inches. You don't want to keep going to this side. That'll make the corner more difficult. Right. Okay. Just let it hang there. Okay. Would you like to continue? Yes. This side? Right there, not beyond that one, yeah. Good. Okay, with the metal tape measure, we can catch it on the end here, stretch down, and get a handle on how much we might need to stretch the grid. Okay. Um, we want people to have to stretch it a bit. It's, it's easier to um, get it perfect with a little stretch than it is to try and work in and shrink up an area. So that's why we do that. And it looks like we're about quarter inch to three eighths that we need to stretch. Um, a little more there. Okay, so uh, we, we can grab it and just get some, get some give. Get the corners. You do a pull with the tub that way. Really want to work it so that we don't have to do a lot of pulling when we're actually stable. Okay, let's see how close we are now. Yeah, we're down to now only about a sixteenth way to go. So we'll use the stretcher tool and get some more stretch out of it. I like to fold the end over. So yeah. these teeth. Grab it, grab it, right, and they're, and they're oh. really sharp, so you have to be careful. And, and then if you put the, the end of this on the table, watch this. See how far oh, I can go? Wow. You can really get yeah. some stretch. Now, it's scary to use this if you haven't used one of these because you'll hear the canvas rip and you'll think there's something wrong <laughs> and you'll be scared. <laughs> exactly. Um, but it's exactly how it, how it should be used. You will chew up the end of the canvas a little bit. But it's the part of the canvas that gets pulled underneath. Right? So what we're going to do is just from the center to the outside and the center to the outside, we'll just stretch it out and then we'll come back up and align it perfectly. Okay? Because right now you can see we're, um, we're not quite there, so we'll give it a little more stretch. See that? Catch your fingers a little bit. There you go. Face the table and pulling. Yeah. Okay. Try and grab it a little further so that it'll. Go ahead. 
keep pushing. Good, good. Yeah, great. Now, if we were needing to stretch more than a half an inch, then we might be chewing up the ends a little, little, little more than we're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. If that's happening, then this is a handy trick. We could apply duct tape over where all those markings are. Let's go ahead and work that in. And we can even flip it up and apply it to this side. See this, as I pull this, we can get the line right to the end. Okay. Yeah. Let's do one more check in the center here. <laughs> there we go. And can you check, make sure that we're on zero down there? Yes. Okay. So in order for this to be exactly at 110, which is what this line would be. We've got to take this end marking and be a quarter inch over the edge. Oh, okay. Do okay. you see that? Because this is the critical measure, that that be 110. Ah, okay. It's not, not even quite a quarter of an inch. So let's see if we can do it by just. There we go. Oh, now we're, now we're being on. Oh, no, we're not. What we should do is just make sure we're set in the center and we'll secure that and then we'll start moving. Okay. So I think we've got to slide this. Yeah. Are you on the edge or over the edge? I'm right, right on the edge. You're right on the edge? Okay. Okay, how are we here? I've got like an eight on the edge. Okay, oh, okay. good. Okay. Yeah, an eight is good. Okay, let's just focus on this one. of a tug to get it the quarter inch behind. Oh, sorry, right here. What are we doing? We're right. We're right on it. Okay, so let's do this. You can put a staple right in the end. On the, on the yeah. Face of it? Yeah, do it diagonally so it catches okay. a couple warp weft. There we go. Go ahead and do it, it'll pass back. That's good. Here? Yeah. All right, let's keep going down the side. Okay. Now that we've got the length set, and it matches. 
matches with our metal tape measure, we can secure this end by stapling underneath. Okay, whoops. What we really want is to have some staples underneath to... Are you going all the way to the back? Um, no, I'm, I'm going back about one and a half, one to two inches. Okay. And I'm going every three inches. But watch as I do this because I'm going to use the tip of the staple gun to act like a stretcher tool. Oh, okay. Okay, so I'm pulling down on the fabric as hard as I can. Just yeah, back. see how I get it? about a sixteenth out of it when I go that like that. Okay. And oh, it finishes off the line. Right. There. So now I've got this bow in that line, right? If I pull down as hard as I can, and then in as hard as I can, I straighten that up. that we put in to get the initial stretch can be pulled out if you want to have that be a perfect straight line or if you just don't like the staple look at the end of your table. Um, I, let's wait to pull them out though until the whole grid's on. Okay, sounds good. Now for the sides. We've got a moist rag and something to keep it from getting to the table. Okay. And that's going to be helpful. And then we'll also slide a tape measure down to the one side. Catch it on the end here. Right on, pretty close, right on, right on. A little too far, which is fine. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll just start. Doesn't really matter if you start in the center and go out or, or whatever, but now we're worried about just the 10 inch mark being on their corresponding um, oh, okay. measurements. Okay. okay. And so we're evening out the stretch. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I like to start from one end and just keep it going. This the ten's actually dead on, so all we need to do is staple under, and we're just a hair away from the corner of the table, the hard surface of the table. So we'll do the same thing here. Pull down on the canvas and in with the gun. You see, yeah. sliding those around right under. Yeah, and then that is a top. It's really good that you don't have batting that is wrapping as well. Your batting end right there. Right. Which, that's great because if you have a table where the batting has been wrapped to, that doesn't give a nice hard surface mm -hmm. to be sure you're aligning this edge to. So I recommend that um, if, if you have a table and you've got the batting, you trim the batting back before you start the cover. And, uh, but you, you've had... Ten years of good service out of this right. one. It's still got a nice, nice clean edge, nice sharp clean edge. Okay, so that that now is a little shy this way, right? Just a little bit, not so quite your ten. Right, right, right in the right middle of the middle line. line. Okay. So this is where the rag is handy. If you wet your fingers, you can get a better grip. See that? Mm -hmm. Now we're now we're right there. The, the third is good too. Great. Okay, down and then. How are we doing with this line? Is that staying square to the edge? Yeah. Yeah, it looks like it's creeping in a little bit here. Let's use it again. Yeah, I 
You good? Uh, a little bit more. Yeah, I'm good right now. Great. Okay, now we'll tackle the corners. Okay. And they're very easy. I usually just pull this out and then spread it like in a triangle. Okay. And then catch that under and just do two or three staples just to hold it. Now you've got this flip down thing that I love, but we're going to need to cut around that, aren't we? Right. And go straight up with it. There you go. You can put two or three. It doesn't have to just be one on each side. There you go. Okay, our final step is to secure the staples from the top down at every cross point. Now this is an optional step. Some workrooms don't like to do that um, because they don't like to put staples in, the, in, their, in their table. I highly recommend it though because over time and use, the center will, it's a, it's a textile, right? So it's, it's going to have some give. It's going to shrink a little or stretch a little. Okay. And if you use it for Roman shades, and I know you do, mm -hmm. then if we can get it perfectly square now and perfectly aligned at every one of those hash marks and then staple down from the top, then you'll get another 10 years out of it and not have to worry about the movement. Okay, yes, definitely. Will, um, will the staples and the devils catch the fabric as I'm laying out with? I've not experienced that, and I think it's because when you put those staples in, it dimples in so, okay. so much that, that there, there's really, the fabric is just gliding over and not really ever touching the staples. Okay, perfect. We'll use the straight edge as we move up the table just to make sure that our cross lines are staying square to the sides. Also, Good idea to switch to longer staples because we want this to go through the padding. You know, if you've got felt, if you've got felt and homosote, we want to make sure we're down deep into the homosote and maybe even catching a little bit of the, the, the wood. Um, if these pull out at any time, just go for a longer staple. Okay. I, I've not experienced anyone who had trouble if they were going with at least half inch okay. or nine sixteenths. Okay, here's a perfect example. See the slight bow mm -hmm. right here in the center? Because I'm on here and you're on there, and we know these are perfect. Right. And so that bow in the center means we need to move it. Push the grid this way. down. And then hash mark. Now you do need to put all your weight into it. Beautiful. You see how the fabric doesn't have an opportunity to catch. Right.
bad idea to drop a pillow square or a builder's square or something just to make sure that this work we're doing isn't putting things out of the square line. One, one, one little bit here.